Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I am excited to be with you today to share some super cute Rhino Ready cards. And you may not have seen this bundle yet. It is not in any catalog and it's not going to be any catalog. So we need to talk a bit about the online exclusive products, where they are, how you find them, and what that means that they're not going to be in a catalog. That's new. And that's part of the reason I'm bringing it to you today is because it's new, it's different, change can be a challenge um, for everybody. So um, it is March 21st, St. Patrick's Day was last week, and I had some really cute memes to share and I forgot. So well, I was away for most of last week on a crafting retreat with some friends and had a marvelous time. Guys, we had so much fun. We never even turned the TV on. Hope has the cottage stocked with a, I don't know, a whole bunch, I don't know, a hundred or more DVDs. We didn't watch a single one. We didn't turn the TV on. We didn't listen to music. We just shared with each other and had just the best time possible. We made cards. We made other crafts. I learned how to bead. I made a beautiful, I made actually two gorgeous bracelets. Um, I learned how to make a star ornament from fabric and a um, foam ball. And then I made a patriotic wreath from clothespins and a wire wreath form. So it was so much fun. Anyway, but back to reality. And it hit hard. <laughs> it really hit hard today coming back. Well, actually, not just today, but this whole yesterday and today. It was the first day back from spring break, first day after the time change that had some specific time elements to it. And um, so that was a challenge. And then this morning, I took Harden and he got his braces off. And as soon as I finished my live, um, pretty much, I'm going to get back in the car. I've got a couple of things to uh, to drop off, go pick him back up, and we'll go back and pick up his retainers this afternoon. So let's get the camera off my face and show you some of the things that we've got for today. All right, so these are the three cards that we're going to make today. How cute is that little rhino with the um, bird on his back, right? Isn't he adorable? Now, I didn't put a white liner on my sample. I just remembered that I forgot to do that. But I think he is precious. And so we're going to make this one. And actually, that uses another online exclusive product back here. These, um, oh gosh, what are they called? Radiating Stitches Dies. So they make this kind of, um, it's not really, yeah, whatever that is. Um, and we're going to make this one in, in no particular order. Now, these are cased from other samples from um, other demonstrators that I found. And this one, this is using the, the desert paper, de desert designer series paper. That's not exactly the right name. And we've used it before. Um, and the sample I cased used a paper that I've already used quite a bit of. So I decided to switch it up and turn this into a red rhinoceros. And I think he's super cute. And then this one is a case of a card um, that Rhonda Wade shared in our meeting this month. And um, and I switched it up a little bit because part of the reason was because um, her, she called for quite a bit more vellum than I had on hand. So I changed it just a little bit. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about some ways that you can even change it up more because this one is just a single card. Um, it's not it opens here. This is the only part that opens. This is where you would write your message, but you could put this on a full card and um, have it open in both places, right? Or yeah, even, even more ways that you could change that out. And even I can see that. So that's pretty, um, that's pretty amazing. Okay. So let's see where, let's start with this one. I think it's actually the first one that I made and we're going to use some granny apple green. I'm not seeing any of y'all on here yet. I don't know if that's that you haven't found me or if I've got a problem with my broadcast. Um, hopefully, it's just that you haven't found me yet. Um, all right, so I've got some pieces here to get out. So I have a granny apple card base. And somewhere I should have um, a liner for inside, but I don't have it right here. 
I have another piece of Granny Apple Green. I have this piece that I've already done the stitching on. You can almost see that. And then I have the Rhino already die cut. So we're going to use the stamp Stamparatus to stamp him. And then we're going to color him. Then I have these other die cuts that you see. Now these die cuts are um, extra pieces that don't cut out the designs themselves. So let's take a look at them. So here's the stamp set. Okay, so here's the stamp set. You can see we've got the three rhinoceroses, the grass, these greetings, um, this little um, party hat. Also looks like a flexed arm, doesn't it? Um, somebody flexing their muscle, this tiny little bird. And then with the dies, we have this one that cuts out this, this one that cuts out here, this cuts this, there, there, and I think, I was going to say I thought this was the bird, but I'm not, yeah. And there's the bird. And actually you have a couple of those. So these dies frame the images to cut them out. And then all of these are extra. So we've got a party hat. We have another bird. So that does cut out the same thing. You can cut out multiples at once. And then we have these tree images, a couple of tropical leaves, and then some these can be used for clouds um, or the tree foliage. Um, you have lots of choices in, in these extra elements. And we are going to work with some of them today. And these probably need to go back on here a specific way that I'm not using. But I'll get that sorted out later. Yeah, that's a hot mess. Okay, um, and I'm actually going to need to cut some of those out in a few minutes. Okay, so this, I don't know, can you see how I did this? This is a piece of crumb cake cardstock that I kind of put into my early espresso. You could use soft suede, even crumb cake ink. Um, and so this became this. Well, why didn't I just use the darker cardstock in the beginning? Well, when you look at this in person, I don't know that you can see it very well there, this had a lot of extra texture that I couldn't get if I had done it the other way. So I'm gonna grab my early espresso and a take your pick tool and kind of just drop that in and then I'm just going to touch it in a few places and see if I can flip it out. <laughs> and then it needs to be flipped over. I'll oh, say I didn't get very much there, but you can kind of see how it starts, right? So we're going to do that again. And let's get some more ink on it. I think the first time I did this, I actually did this with my finger. Ooh, it's starting to look really cool. So now the question is, do we like it like that? Or do we want just a little bit more? Hello, Ronnie. I was just talking about you and our fantastic weekend that we had and how hard it was to come back to reality this week. All right, so I like the effect I got there. So I'm going to leave it with that and push that out of the way and then pull out the Stamparatus and the basic gray. And we're going to stamp our little rhinoceros and color him. So I already have my stamp in place. I just need to line up my template with the image I stamped so that I can add in 
the die cut image and cut it out. <laughs> Reality is definitely tough. Um, I know that you might find this hard to believe, but my teenager behaved like a surly teenager this morning, and I just didn't know how to handle it. He is normally just an awesome kid, but I was really, I was really over it. I actually parked for a few minutes and turned off the engine. Okay, now I rub this. Now this tool. You can make yourself, this is just a finial and a furniture felt pad, but it is awesome at getting you that even pressure on your image. I had a friend make that for me, and I just love it. And I've covered up. If I don't put things back right as I'm doing it, I won't find it for the next step. So I'll clean him off with a piece of a chamois. I have a chamois that I've cut into fours just for that purpose. All right, now my little guy, I covered with, um, colored with Smoky Slate and Flirty Flamingo. And where are you? And I could give his beak a little pumpkin pie. I didn't do that last time, but maybe I will this time. So this is pretty fast coloring, or maybe I can make it pretty fast today. So I'm stamping with alcohol blends. So the ink of my die cut, or ink, bleh. I used a water-based ink to stamp my outline, and then I'm coloring in alcohol based inks. And there's not much reason to think I can blend there. So I'm just going to stop. So I'm just going to kind of follow along the artist lines to know where my darker coloring should be. And you want to work in small spaces. And I'm going to come back in my light. And then somewhere on this rhinoceros, I want to create the effect of light hitting it. Your colors blend more with every layer you add. And you'll notice I'm not doing little circles today, or at least I wasn't for a second there. I do typically work in circles. Oh, we should leave the little... They're probably really not toenails, are they? But that would be fun to come back with a little flirty flamingo. So it took Harden to get his braces off. Now I was all set. I've got a box to drop at UPS for Ronnie. I've got that in the car. It's ready to go. I need to run by my friend Hope's house and drop something off at her. I've got that. That's in the car. Harden gets in the car. We get to the orthodontist and I realize, do you have your backpack? No. Why don't you have your backpack? You know, don't you think I would just drop you off at school on the way back? Well, he didn't think about it. So we came back home. This is adding at least a half an hour to the trip. And we get his backpack. And we get on the way. We have our little talk. And then he says, do you have my note? I said, why would I have your note? It's your note. So we turn around and come back to the house and get his note. Well, my morning, my day is going to be quite a bit just in the car. Mm 
And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just not how I plan to spend it. All right, I've got a bigger, <laughs> bigger, bigger light space than I might want. So I'm just going to kind of go around and around to create a little smaller space and it'll dry and I can come back and add more layers because really that looks too light now. Okay. And I couldn't decide what to do with his little antlers horn, his horn, right? Should that be dark or should it be light? I don't know that I've still decided. Now I just called him a him and now I'm going to come back and like it's a she with pink toenails. So there's no rhyme or reason to today. Okay, so that is all I need to do. Other than, oh, I lied. I did do something different to these three pieces. Um, grab a, I think I used a big one. Grab a blending brush and the same color ink. I could use darker, but, whoops, that's not the right one. But I wanted to, just like I created some depth in that tree, I actually created some interest around here. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm wondering if I shouldn't use a little more of like old olive. And since most of this is getting hidden, I'm not concerned with whether or not, too badly, whether or not I create a blob of ink that I can't blend because I want it to be pretty uneven. So it's gonna come like this. Okay, I'm all right with that. And then I'd really like to be able to make those little cutouts stand out. Without coming in with a marker. And they are just too flat. They're not going to do it. So again, I don't really want this to be even. I think that's pretty cool looking. Just adding some texture. So that looks pretty cool. All right, and we are down to assembly. Just gonna grab I use my grid paper to help me line things up. Doesn't make it perfect, but I do think it does help me. This paper was, this grid paper, this colored grid paper was on um, the clearance rack, but we looked over the weekend and I think that it has sold out. One of the things I love most about this color is that you can see I'm able to give myself the center pretty easily by um, I don't know by by lining it up on the the grid paper this way. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it does help. All right, now. I'm going to use some glue, some Tombow on this piece. Just like that. And then a little on this, and I'm not too worried about getting any up here because that foliage is going to be on top of it. Oh, 
stay. So that'll help hold that down in place. Can you see? Oh, stay. Look, I'm talking to my dog. He must think so too, because I just heard him moving around. All right, we need some dimensionals. Oh, that one's empty. That one's empty. This one has some. What do you think? Should we leave his little horn just white? I'm going to do that for this one. And you can see how you can see the layers of color where I really colored heavier by what bled through. And in your kit, I didn't share the kit, what's in the kit yet, but there will be a white piece to go inside that you can stamp and decorate as you wish. And just want you tripping along just like that. And then you could stamp your greeting because I didn't even I didn't even realize I didn't put a greeting on that. My goodness. But there, pretty blank, generic, fun card for card number one. And I'll show you what the Okay. I will do that, Ronnie. So here's what would look your kit would look like. Two envelopes, two card bases, two inside liners. This is for your die cuts. Um, this is for the die cut of the tree base. Um, these pieces are for the layers on the front. And then this piece is for the rhinoceroses <laughs> that you'll die cut. So that's everything that would come in your kit. You would definitely need the bundle to do your crafting. All right, that's card number one. Let's do this card second. So the second card I'm going to do is this one. So what does the kit look like for it? Well, hopefully everything's in here, right? Two envelopes. And then you have, so your card base is just a four and a quarter by five and a half. So you have two of those. Then there's a white layer, two white layers, two of the designer series papers. Then you have two vellum layers. This vellum is in the mini catalog and it has several patterns to it. That supply list will be in the blog post. Um, then this is all, this is for your, for your die cutting, for your, um, your greeting die cutting, or actually I didn't, I hand cut that. You have these two for, and this is evening evergreen and early espresso. And then these layers, let's see if I can get this right. Okay, I think, so you need... You need two for that, and then you'll have two on the inside that are the same size. And with this one, we're going to stamp this in gray granite cardstock. Cut it out of gray granite cardstock, stamp and cut. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, where is my kit for this one? And I actually think I've lost a couple of pieces. All right, so here's my vellum. And there are a couple of things we need to remember about that vellum too. All right, so here is our piece of our tree base. There's our tree trunk. Those are both cut from early espresso. Here's a rhinoceros cut from gray granite. Here are our white pieces, our evening evergreen, all of our layers 
except for this piece here, which it fell on the floor yesterday. I knew when it happened, but I can't find it. I have a rug <laughs> on my floor. Um, stick into that story. When you're working with this vellum, we need to score it and then we need and we need to be gentle about it. So this is four by six and we're going to score it at three. And like I said, it needs to be gentle because it's pretty easy to tear. Right, I thought I had a pair over there, a piece over there I could show you. Right, so I'm just going to be gentle in the fold. Okay, yeah, trying to be gentle in the fold. And then we're going to get out the mini machine. I got a, got a piece of scrap evening evergreen and some plates. My plates are looking a little worn. I could stand to order some new ones. Um, this one. Now the instructions for the mini machine tell you to use plate, the white plate, which I think is number four. But I, this number three plate is easier to crank. And for everything except your most detailed dies, it cuts just fine. Now my friend Cindy, every machine is different. My friend Cindy has no issues working with the white plate on her machine. So you just have to do a little trial and error and find out what works best for you and your machine. Okay, then we'll get the Stamparatus back out and we'll stamp this guy. It's warmer in Tennessee today. It's like 50. And gray granite. If you don't have gray granite, you can use smoky slate. Gray granite is a more taupe color. No, look, he's not really dark. You know what? I'm going to go back to basic gray. Because I want him to be more, more darker than that. More darker. How about just darker? Clean him off. This is the brilliant thing about the Stamparatus is that I can just leave that in place and stamp again. and it'll go right on top. Look at that. So cool. I need to get you over there. Remember to wash you. Okay. And then we're gonna need the grass. Hope your birthday and Inside, I need the little bird. My blocks are almost out of reach. Okay, so on some scrap white, I'm going to stamp this greeting in early espresso. And I'm going to cut around it. There's not a, a die. And so I've got ink around the edge of my red rubber, but as long as I go straight down and straight up, that shouldn't be a problem. Ugh, that didn't stamp well at all. Could be that my ink pad needs new ink. Could be that my pressure wasn't even. 
that one's better. But let me show you what happens if I don't go straight down. If, what if I rock it a little bit? Well, okay, I create that mess. But what I really wanted to show you is I can't recreate it. Isn't that just, it's just like a kid, isn't it? If I hadn't tried to, it would have most definitely created a halo, which is just when you get the edge, the ink that you picked up from the edge, it gets around on your cardstock. So while I cut and I have you captive, I'll remind you that we do know a color refresh is coming with the current with the new catalog in May. So if you have not gotten your favorite colors, there are five that will retire. Soft Succulent, Evening Evergreen are two of the colors that are going out. They are two of my favorite colors. And so do not wait to get them. Get them sooner rather than later. Um, Ronnie, I'm going to build you a shopping cart and then you can pick and choose from that what you want. So I'll send you that link sometime after the second orthodontist appointment today. I'm just going to do some grass straight across. I'm doing this in gray granite. And even though this is photopolymer and I can't see through, I think that turned out pretty, pretty well. You'd never know that that was, I don't think you'd know that that was stamped three times. All right. And then we need to do a little bit on the inside. And then we're going to stamp and cut out the bird. on our scrap paper. That piece is big enough there. And I could get the um, machine back out and fussy cut that, or, and cut it out with the die. There is a die for it, but I'm not going to. Um, it's just as fast for me to do a rough cut around the little bird with my scissors. But you could do, you could even put this on the Stamparatus the same way I did for the rhinoceros. That is good enough for me. I think we've got all our pieces. We are ready to do a little bit of coloring and some assembly. So I'm going to do a dot of pumpkin pie on the beaks. And uh, I don't know if I, no, I don't need that for the next one. Where are you? Pumpkin pie. Um, oh, crud, that's the wrong one. So I had all of those blends unpacked, which means my, my muscle memory is picking them up from the wrong place. They're not quite in the same slots. And I'm using the alcohol blends to color them on my last card. I need to remember to not do that. All right, let's layer these guys up. So we're going to put this, this, um, this white piece on the inside of our vellum here. And then we're going to put this green here 
which is going to be a little tricky because we want this green to cover this white and to frame this piece. So, yeah, no pressure. And we can go ahead and do this part while I ponder how I want to do that other. when you're laying this out, if you just want to look to see if it looks good on three sides, then in theory, the fourth side has to be pretty accurate, pretty correct as well. I didn't even get the stamps, the bundle that was part of this desert something, shades of the desert, I don't know, suite in the mini catalog. I've used the heck out of this paper. All right, let's see how to do this. And again, I'm being kind of careful with my curve. Um, so I think I just want, gonna eyeball it. There we go. And then on this side, green. Actually, I wonder if I can do it this way. Okay. Let's see how this works. So what I did was just try to evenly cover the white piece underneath. And see, see here you can see how vellum shows your adhesive. So um, that's why we hide it under other things. And I actually may have gone a little bit over Not so much that it's going to matter. There we go. And then now I did because I've got such a soft score, I did put a little dab of tape where it will show. But it's not too bad. And I'm trying to decide what piece needs to go down first. I think this one does. Or maybe it's this one. And I'll put one dimensional on the bottom. Okay, where did my, then this I'm gonna do with glue. And then this guy. And I need to get some glue on the little ends. Oh, there's nowhere I can touch that doesn't have glue. This is when
this little tweezers come in handy. These are out of the embossing um, toolkit. And I can put these kind of under or over them under on the last one. Maybe we'll do a little bit of both. This is multitasking, huh? Little dot of glue for the bird for the inside. Love these tweezers. And I just put that kind of in the grass. Like that. So you've got room to write your greeting there. And then we need a linen thread double bow. My linen thread is a hot mess right there. It happens. I find if I just run it through my fingers, it'll lose some of its um, curl. I don't know what else to call it. And I've started doing this with glue rather than a glue dot sometimes. It seems to hold better. And I can put a block on top, top of it and it'll hold even better. All right, that's card number two. On to card number three. And it is a white base. Um, the kit looks like this, two envelopes. A whole lot of small you need six of each of the um, sizes so there's your one light card card layers for one card layers for two there's the designer series paper for one and two and the two bases and then So here's mine that we're going to work with today. So thick white makes a sturdier card base than regular basic white. And you could just cut one larger piece, but like I said, I'm in love with this paper and this let me save it. So rather than cutting it four and a quarter by five and a half, I was able to cut it three by five and a half and get quite a bit more from my paper. And well, clearly I have some glue on one of my fingers. There we go. Then these are all the same length, five and a half. There's just a tiny border. on Either side. It's not uncommon to still, even though they're pretty lined up, to need to trim this off. And you could do this with your trimmer. I'm just going to take my snips and do that. Cut that little bit off. Just to go this way. I'm 
it's not good when I get all quiet. Okay, now we're actually going to stamp and color on the three smaller ones, then layer them to the larger ones, and then layer them down. So I'll put the grass away. And we'll stamp our rhinoceroses. And we're going to stamp them in basic gray and then color them. I like this. This is kind of a fun technique to stamp your images like this. We've done this with greenery. We've done this with hippos, other animals. Sometimes we let their little faces peek through, like the picture, picture this. Um, dang. Picture this that die cut creates windows. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take this off of the stamparatus too. I'll probably immediately remember why I didn't want to do that, but that's okay. There wasn't any reason to use the Stamparatus. We didn't need that, that to be precise. All right, now let's color these. This is the one that we're gonna color red and we're gonna color these in. I did color the horns this time in kind of an ivory. The bronze and ivory are sold as a single pair of blends. And I think if there's going to be a shadow, it's going to be on this side. It's not necessary to go all the way up to the lines. You may have some um, bleeding of the color. You can always add. It is more difficult to take it away. And so today you've seen how we really didn't color just by using gray cardstock for our image. And then two cards where we did. There we go. And then this one. I hope my head's not in the camera. It might be. No. The 
the lines are up on this side. And we'll go with that. Just remember when you color with your blends, work in small areas. Oh, um, last night was the last day to register for the March Club and birthday card class. However, we found some errors last night in the birthday card class. So I'm going to do a last call today instead. So if you wondered what was going on, that was my mistake. Pricing was messed up. The description was messed up. I don't know if I forgot to save my changes or, or if I forgot to go back and correct something. But it was a mess. I'm going to leave that alone for a bit. Oh, I think I mixed up my lids. All right, and this little guy. Is there such a thing as a red rhinoceros? I might have just dreamt that. Put Cajun Craze. I don't think Cajun Craze gets the love it deserves. It's a great color for fall. And as it turns out, for making a red rhinoceros. And I could have actually stamped the outline in Cajun Craze. That might have been something to show you. So I'll just tell you, give that a try. Let me know what you think. Oh, and don't be expecting Big smiling photos of Harden with his braces off. That's not going to happen. As much as I'd love it. I haven't tried to guilt him in the, hey, I paid a lot for that. Can't I get a smile? That didn't work either. But I have a couple of friends whose son's the same age or the same. So, All right, I went a little bit out of the lines there. Not that it's going to matter a whole heck of a lot, but I'm just going to come over with the color lifter and see if I can soften it. Man. How fast this goes. That is not straight on there. I did not, oh, a party blower might hide that. And this is a lot of layers, so I did not use dimensionals. I'm totally eyeballing this. Thank you. I think they turned out cute. I had no idea that we were going to get this little rhinoceros. This online exclusive thing has been a, it's new for everybody. So um, there is a link, there will be a link in the blog post that shows you how to get straight to that area of my website. Um, otherwise, when you go to the menu and you're shopping, 
you can um, you can look for online exclusives and go straight to that page. And then I did stamp something on the inside, and I need to talk about this because I stamped "Hope Your Birthday Is Wild," and I did this in Cajun craze. Then I added the bird in basic gray, and then I colored it with a blend, which meant it bled through. And you probably can't see it there. And if you weren't, I, I caught it pretty quickly. But um, yeah, it bled through. So don't make that mistake. If you're going to color it, color it with your Stampin' Write marker instead. Um, but real quickly, I'll show you how I knew where to put the bird's feet. Put that down first. Oh, my H is a little wonky. I could touch that up with either blend or stamp and write marker. This is a stamp and write marker for comparison. Or I could just leave it alone. Now the bird. So here's our little bird and basic gray. I need to know where his feet are in relation to this sticker. So I used my grid paper and the sticker to figure out if the feet would come up and they do. So that tells me when I come over here, if I want his feet to land on the words, I gotta pretty much take the sticker to the top. And that's pretty darn close. And this time I will color it with the daffodil marker. That's not daffodil, are you? Oh yeah, you are, okay. And I'll take the brush into the marker. Oh, goodness. Um, no, that marker is nearly dry. Well, good thing I tried to get this out, huh? Yeah, my daffodil delight marker is pretty much kapooey. Okay, so we'll get so saffron, saffron instead, or crushed curry, because that's the one I grabbed. And we'll color it, and it doesn't bleed through. Okay, so thanks so much for being here. I'm, I didn't do a party hat, party blower on this one, so I'll bring my other one out. But here are the three cards for today, and you will get these card, this card kit for free to make two of each when you place a $35 order, at least a $35 order in the store this week by Friday night. And there they are. And this one needs something on the inside, but it doesn't have it. So you'll get a piece of white, and you can do that with yours. So have a great day, everybody. Um, be looking for that last call email to tell you about the, the card classes. The April 1st wreath class is going to have to be postponed. Our venue um, has got to take care of, I think it's termites. So we'll let them take care of that. And then we will reschedule for that fundraiser for the Foundation Fighting Blindness. So have a great day, everybody. And I will see you again um, either this weekend if you're coming for the class in person or next week for the class to go where we are featuring, I forget if it's Legendary Ride or the Firefly. Both are in the mini catalog. So have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.